Good afternoon and welcome back to the National Basketball Arena. If you were with us earlier for two extremely exciting Subway All-Ireland School Cup Finals. This is the third game of the day. And it's St. Joe's, Charlestown versus Kolishta Ida and Dangan. Joined for this one by under-18 men's Irish coach, Connor James. Connor, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, man. Yet again, we've been stuck with some Irish names, which we'll struggle through. And by the second half, we may get one or two of them right. So no score so far. As the first shot in anger goes up from College to Eders. Number four, Sarah Nielinschig. Super job. Doherty with the ball into the hands inside to number six Alicia Duffy and it's first shot up rolls in and out for Charles down and again rebound inside for Alicia Duffy and she is fouled so a chance to open the scoring from the foul line for Duffy And that one will fall short, so we stay with no score, a minute gone. Inside, Tony Callig and a steal nearly for Chelsea Doherty, but it will remain College to Eda's ball. Yeah, St. Joe's doing really well in the zone there, just keeping it nice and tight, making it a very hard for him to get in the key and, and trying to pick off a few passes. Nidulin takes the first shot, doesn't get it, but they get another chance, but great steal from Burke, and Burke will have a chance to go all the way, and she finishes, and the first score of the game goes to St. Joe's, and the scoreline 2 nil. Yeah, an excellent job by Burke there, just getting her hands on the ball, and rewarding herself uh, down the far end. Good rebound from the missed shot from Crean and she'll look to push herself for St. Joe's. It's Nihei back on defence, managed to slow them down, but go back to the point guard, Doherty. She looks inside for Duffy, doesn't get it, and a good rebound this time from Sumi Nidulin. Open on the far side is Kira Nihei. A shot, good defence as the shot goes up from Sarah. Nilin Shig, they'll have another chance here. And good steal again from Doherty. Doherty again showing her speed and gets all with the basket but can't finish, gets her own rebound, get another chance. And this time it'll be. Nihei coming away from it and she gets all the way to the basket. Nice left handed finish but can't score and ends up in the hands of Queen. And a fast up and down game as Queen goes to the basket but she can't score and travel call. So up and down game early, Connor, but no scores. Yeah, it's like you're watching a game of pinball. It's just back and forth. Uh, there's no real structure to the game as of yet. I reckon once the, uh, once the nerves settle down, uh, we can see a proper game of basketball starting to take place. Into the corner. And it's Kira Nihei decides to pass across and a nice fake wide open shot for Bryony Nivroom, but doesn't go. And in the end, a foul is called on Nivroom. She tries to chase her own missed shot. And it'll be St. Joe's look to extend their lead. They lead early 2 to 0. Doherty gets inside the key, finds an open Duffy. Duffy can't score, but good hands on the rebound from Burke, but eventually misses out and into the hands of 
Nihei, but just the pass goes a little bit too strong for Brian Nivoon, but last off St. Joe's. And Clush to Ida will have a chance from the end line. Corner shot, nice looking shot from Niluna. Humasai, but doesn't go, but it is last out off Chelsea Doherty, I think, so it'll be another chance for Clush to Ida. Just keeps it in bounds there. In the corner, nice shot from Nihei. Doesn't go, and a good rebound from Queen. Yeah, they're, they're getting unlucky against that zone. I mean, they're, they're taking the right shots when they have a set offense, uh, just not dropping right now. Well, we've seen in earlier games, teams have been slow to get going, but as the game went on, found their range a little bit, and I'm sure this one will be no different. Don't forget, if you're watching back at school, or even at home at this time, if you're lucky enough, two o'clock, please do send us your pictures or messages of support on Twitter. It's at B-Ball IRL, so at B-Ball IRL. You can use the hashtag Subway Schools. We'll re read out any messages we get. Good defense on this occasion from Alicia Duffy. And Suma Nidulaon just bounces off a knee. And with almost half of this first quarter gone, we're still waiting for the first score from Kalish Ida. Shot from Queen, doesn't go. Rebounded eventually by Molly Nikali. And she will bring the ball up. Either a uh, corner shot yeah. opens the score for Zu Sumi Nidulon, and eventually they crack the zone. Connor, yeah, she's a really nice looking uh, shot. And if they can keep getting her the ball after working the zone for you know back and forth for a couple of uh, rotations, then uh, if they can find her open, I'm sure she'll knock a few more down today. Nice fake and drive from Chelsea Doherty. And she'll go to the line for two shots. Just goes off. So just to recap on today's games, two extremely close games in the under-19 boys game. Black Rock came from behind to defeat Larkin Community College. And then just now in the under-16 C final, Castle Ray beat Holy Child in an overtime game. With a nice shot there. Puts College to Eda in the lead and we'll take our first time out of the game with College to Eda leading on a scoreline of 4-2. to two.
So welcome back. As Kloster, Ida and Dangan lead St. Joe's Charlestown on scoring a 5 2. So after early lead for St. Joe's, it's Kloster Ida that have had the last two scores on a nice three last time down. And eight seconds on the shot clock, score 5 2. So both teams settling in a bit now, Connor. Who's, yeah, looking, uh, who's looking the better team? Uh, well, Kloster Ida have shown that they can shoot. The outside shot and it looks along the, the both teams are in a in a zone, they're keeping the key nice and blocked up there, so avoiding giving away any easy layups. So the team that can shoot the better uh, are likely to win this game and at the moment that's cost either. So the Lynchig reversed it into the hands of Nivroom. Long range shot from Nikalik doesn't go, but it ends up into the hands of number eight, Brainy Nivroom, and she makes no mistake and extends the lead, 7-2. Yeah, and that's the importance of having people crash the offensive board, giving yourself a second opportunity, uh, and she took it, uh, and nothing but now. Nice backdoor pass there from Doherty, finds Queen on the backdoor pass, can't finish, but she will go to the line for two shots. Nothing but net on the first. Misses the second one and well kept in there. As Nihei looks to set things up. Kalish to Ida. Nice fake from Kiwi Nihei, and she makes a nice long range two off the dribble, and all of a sudden, the lead's extended again, and Kalush to Ida starting to find their range from long distance. Yeah, it's been, it's been the, the story of the game so far, that they're able to hit some outside shots, but it's come some really good movement against the zone, people moving into the right areas, and making the right pass. Good penetration, again from Doherty, results in Duffy making a two off the glass, and we're nine to five. Baseline drive inside and back out to Nivroom. She gets it to Nihei, who just made her last jump shot, but a little off target on that one. And the ball will go back to St. Joe's with 2.21 to go in the first quarter. Doherty did a nice job of penetrating the zone last time. This time she tries to do it with a pass, but well picked off. Couldn't see who that was. In fact, it was uh, Bryony Nivoon. And she gets into the hand of point guard Lee Linshig. This Nivoon looks to penetrate, but nowhere to go. And a good job of the zone. As good hands from Chelsea Doherty again, but she just steps on the line before she tries to release one of her teammates down the court. Yeah, unlucky there. She again got her hand on the ball, uh, poked it away, but just stood out of bounds in the meantime. So oh, back in the hands of point guard Sarah Nee Lynchig. Open in the corner for Nihuma. Puts on the dribble but can't make the jump shot. And Doherty at speed looking to get down the court. Good defense from number 10, Kira Nihei. And just kept in bounds. And back into the hands of point guard Nee Lynchig. Got away with a little bit of a travel there. Open shot, just steps on the line from Nihei, but can't connect either way, and it will go back to St. Joe's. You can just see uh, Klaus Ida just overloading one side of the zone, making sure that they uh, get an open shot. They're very good at finding the open shot as well, so they're always taking decent shots, and when you're taking open shots, you quite a good chance of them going in. Yeah, travel there from Doherty. Good defense, Kalish Ida. And with just 53 seconds to go in this first quarter, Kalish Ida will have a chance to extend their lead. They lead 9 to 5. Don't forget on Twitter, at Bball IOL, send us your pictures and messages and 
as the play goes very slow. Kira Nihei looks down and finds herself standing on the line. Doherty under pressure from Nihei. Shot from Queen, but good defense. Gets a hand on the ball. And Nikalik decides to slow it up and gets back into the point guard's hands. The Doulon somehow managed to split the defense, but she did not fool Duffy, who knocks out of bounds. And with 12.3 seconds to go, it'd be clutch to eat a ball. The Doulon finds the wide open Nihei, takes a long two, doesn't go. And six seconds to go, if they're quick, Chelsea Doherty throws it from three quarter court. Not a bad effort, so time expires here in the first quarter in 19C. Subway All Island Schools Cup. It's Kalishta Ida leading St. Joe's on the score of 9 to 5. Welcome back here to National Basketball Arena. Start the second quarter. Ball in the hands of St. Joe's Charlestown. So we're currently trailing nine to five. Just want to say a very warm welcome to St. Attractus National School, watching in their classroom. Hope you're enjoying the game and hopefully we can hear you screaming from there for your school. We couldn't see your teacher in the picture as off the races goes Hannah Burke, and Hannah Burke gives you something to cheer about and gets it back to nine to seven. Yeah, that's a, the third time now they've got their hands on the ball on defense and got out in the break, uh, and thankfully able to pay it off, make a payoff this time. Hopefully in St. Attractus, they do have a teacher with them. The rumor of them sleeping under the desk is false. But certainly inspire their team here at the moment. So Queen looking to go all the way for back-to-back -back baskets and she makes it and all of a sudden we're tied at 9 all. Yeah, it's great now they've found a way to score, which is out in transition. They've struggled against the zone so far, so if they can just play a bit harder on defense, keep getting those steals, make sure they secure their defensive rebounds, get out faster to break, they might get a easier lanes to the basket. So, great start to the second quarter for St. Joe's Charlestown and they've a chance to take the lead here, and Queen patiently looks for some space. And that will be Duffy with a two, doesn't go, and rebounded and off to the races by Nilin Shig. Put steps out of bounds, and that'll be a turnover, and back to St. Joe's. Inside shot from Sarah Burke. Doesn't go, but they'll have another chance. And it is Burke again, but again can't find her range. But Doherty ends up with the balls. It's batted around a little bit into the hands of Queen. And a foul is called. That's got a number eight. Greeny leave room. Yeah. 
Doherty in the corner. Good pressure from Nihei. Eventually finds its way to Burke, who slows things down. You have to shoot soon, the shot clock is running down. Good defense from Klosh to Ida. The missed shot, and off they go to the races. Nidulon decides to slow it down into the hands of Nihei. Close to tension by Doherty, but nice inside pass, and the shot goes up from Nikali, but can't go, and Queen has numbers now, three on one. Decides to go herself all the way to the basket. Can't finish, but gets her own rebound. And on the second attempt, Keely Queen knocks down her second basket. An, an extra job to, to stick with it there, but once again, it came from getting out in the break, making sure the defense wasn't set. As you see, a super three-pointer from Kearney Shea again. And Klosh Dida back in the lead. It didn't trail for long. And good defence, but stays with St. Joe's in the end. It's Chelsea Doherty just looks for that little bit of space. Inside to Duffy. Duffy doesn't get the roll. And the Hay looks to start the fast break for Kalista Ida into the hands of the Linshig. Long two from the Vroon doesn't go. Yeah, it was a well contested sh um, by number 13 off St. Joe Sarah She really got her hand up with a shot and forced, a, forced uh, a quick shot, which meant that St. Joe's got possession back. So, six minutes to go, turnover. And you do long. Looking for that gap. He's open at the top of the key. Tries to pass, but into the hands. Comes back to Nidulon, just steps over the line, so it'll only be a two. Just bounces away. And St. Joe's will have a chance to take the lead here. Good handle from Doherty. Finds some space into Duffy. And Duffy, beautiful layup off the backboard. And St. Joe's retake the lead. Yeah, great penetration by Doherty. Uh, really got into the middle lane. Dragged all the defenders with her. Able to kick it out to her teammate. Uh, who was able to take a nice dribble past the defender and, and lay it up for the easy two. Nidulon looks to put it on the floor and she's fouled by Sarah Burke. And we'll have a timeout there with 5.13 to go in the second quarter. It's St. Joe's lead 13 to 12. So it'll be clutch to eat a ball from the sideline. They waste no time in getting it in. And a shot from Nivu. Doesn't go. Nivu Doulon, sorry. McQueen just get called for a carry. She pulled it a little high. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there. But again, trying to do the right thing. Just get into the middle of the key, draw defenders, and, and make it a good decision from there. And checked into the game for the first time for Klish to Ida is Georgia... Need Cronin, just to make it more difficult for us. Long two from the Linshig doesn't go. And it will be Chelsea Doherty. Looks nice pass inside, but good defense this time from Nikali who gets the block. 
and she looks to get things started as Nidulon finds a little bit of space. There is the recently checked in Nikroni. Nice shot from Nidulon, but doesn't go. And off to the races here is Burke. But good defense to slow her down from Nihei. The referee having a conversation here with the coach whilst the game goes on, but we'll keep going. Yeah, it looked like they got away with a few travel calls, all right, and I don't know if it's me or that they don't like that they call them for, but they're letting them go now. Chelsea Doherty, and a foul by Kira Nihei. And it will be two shots. Chelsea Doherty. Yeah, you can see that Doherty and Crean are really the main playmakers for St. Joe's, and when the ball's in their hands, they're really looking to make something happen. Makes the first, missed the second, but gets her own rebound after some great hustle from Duffy. And Queen runs that one down, and she'll have a chance to go over to the basket, but can't finish, and Nidulon gets hold of it. And Connor just looking over at the scoreboard there, three fouls for Nihei, and also for Nivoon. They're still in the game. Actually, Nivoon is now on the bench. Is that going to make it tough as we go on to the game for Kalish Ida? Yeah, I mean, it is, but... Again, they're, they're, they're playing a zone on defence, so really it gives an opportunity to, to hide them in, in a way in the defence. But uh, their main, uh, the, the main thing they'll be looking forward to now is trying to contribute as much as they can on the offensive end before foul trouble uh, comes into question in the third and fourth quarter. Queen, nice drive baseline and she fouled by Molly Nikalhig, and that will be her third. So they're whacking up a little bit for Kalish to eat it. Will be a little bit of a worry for Coach Gina Prenderville below us. And again, makes one, two to extend the lead. 15 to 12 to St. Joe's and Charlestown. And a missed shot, but comes back to Nidulon. And again, she looks penetrating. Nice moves, <laughs> goes through the legs of Duffy and rather unfortunately call for a travel. Good move inside from Queen, but doesn't go. So we'll take a time out here. St. Joe's leading 15 to 12, 2.42 to go in the second quarter.
So, welcome back. Ball in the hands of Klosh to Ida and Dangan. They're trailing. St. Joe's Charles down 15 to 12 here. 2.35 to go in the second quarter. Nihei, nice float on the lane. Doesn't go, but rebounded by Nilinshig. But a steal into the hands of Chelsea Doherty. She'll have a chance to go all the way, which she does, but can't finish. But good rebound as she followed up from Hannah Burke. And Hannah Burke makes no mistake and extends the lead to a five-point game. Yeah, Burke did really well there to, to follow her teammate out in transition and uh, read the rebound well, able to get back up for the score. Nihei down the lane. Can't get it. Good rebound. And again, it's Burke off the races, but fouled by Nidoulon. A quick shout out to Sandra Walsh and Colin Gannon, both watching us and getting in touch on Twitter. Don't forget, you can get us in any of the games, all games, all week, live on the stream and on Twitter at Bball IOL. Send us your pictures, messages, whatever you like. Try to use the hashtag Subway Schools. Still one more game to come today, which will be the under-19 boys B final. St. Mary's, Dias and Drogheda versus Colossian and Pierce Glamaya. And then three A school games tomorrow, ahead of this weekend's Hool Hoops National Cup finals. Tickets available at basketballion.ie. All Hula Hoops Cup Finals from under 18s to National Intermediate Cup will be streamed live and the Men's Super League Final 8pm TG Car on Saturday night and the Women's Super League Final 5pm TG Car on Sunday night so a festival of basketball ahead of us so 1.18 to go St. Joseph Lees and Connor uh, close game in the first half St. Joe's obviously leading what do you see happening in the second half? Yes, St. Joe's will be happy. They get off to a slow start. They've, they've pulled it back and uh, leading going into half time now. Uh, you'd assume coming out coming out in the, in the second half, uh, you want to you want to see Klosh either get back in get first of all get back in transition and then start her own transition. They haven't scored many easy baskets. They've been made to work for all of them. Uh, the, they get some easy baskets. It'll build momentum, build some confidence, and they'll start hitting the right side shot. Uh, another commentator's curse there. There <laughs> is the outside shot from Kolesha Ida and Suma Nidulon. She's hit a couple. Checked in the game for the first time is Elaine O'Donnell for St. Joe's. And there she is, and she wastes no time getting a shot up. But a foul pushing the back from Alicia Duffy. I suppose St. Joe's, what they'll, be, what they'll be talking about is, you know, a bit more the same in terms of getting out in transition, but... Um, again, stopping their shooters on defense. Turn their shooters into drivers and their drivers into shooters. So Kiyo Nihei sets things up. Under pressure. But Nihei, good ball movement from Klosh Dida. Open shot from the top of the key from Nilinshik. Doesn't go, but grabs her own rebound eventually after banging off a couple of hands and a bit of space for Nidulon. She hit her last jam, but she'll take another one. This one. Just rims out, and eventually last off College to Ida, and it will go to St. Joe's ball. 10.5 seconds to go. It's time for one last shot, and it will be Kelly Queen pulls up for a long three. Bit of contact, but it's not called, and they play on. And actually, Doulon will just let one go for the buzzer, but falls short. So at the end of the first half of the under 19C Subway All Island Schools Cup final, it's St. Joe's Charlestown. Leading Kalista, Ida and Dangan on a scoreline 17 to 14. Join us shortly for the second half.
So welcome back. We're just getting underway here for the second half of the N19C Subway All Island Schools Cup Final. It's St. Joe's Charlestown that are in red, leading 17 to 14 over Klosh to Eda and Dangan. An early shot from Burke, doesn't go. Rebounded and out back out to Queen who can't finish. Andy Doulon gets the rebound for College to Eda. Here is Nikalik. She turns down the shot but finds a wide open the Linshig. But good defense again from St. Joe's. And eventually St. Joe's do come up with it. And Queen will have a chance and a foul call. Connacht close first half. Only three point game starting in the second half. What will uh, College to Eda be looking to do and also St. Joe's looking to change in order to stay in the lead? Yeah, so Clash Eda will first of all need to get back in transition better. I mean, that's two in a row now that they've that uh, they've been lucky. St. Joe's haven't converted, but they've been out of the break. And uh, shaded very well the first time, not to get in foul, another another foul against her name there. She just stood up straight. Um, so stopping that and then getting out and trying to get easy scores themselves. St. Joe's will again. I mean, most of their points have come from transition, so they'll be looking to keep that up uh, and stopping the likes of Nihei trying to get that outside shot. Great defense from the Hayes, you mentioned her there. She gets two hands on Hannah Burke's shot. Queen. The Doulon playing good defense, but open in the corner. And a drive from Doherty. And she goes off the glass but doesn't get it. And a rebound from Nikalig. The first shot of the game from Georgia Necroni is unlucky there, it bounces out. Queen, top of the key. Nice pass inside, but again, good defense. Oh, she's called for a foul there. Just getting a, a little bit late is Necroni. Burke did really well there to find the space in the middle, take a power dribble, and go strong up to the basket. But can't make the first. And unsuccessful in the second, and then here comes Sarani Linshig and finds open D. Nidulon, who long shot in the end, but the Linshig doesn't go, and good rebound eventually by Burke and a foul again so a bit of a stop start start this second half with three quick fouls called on Kalishta Ida and they've three people with three fouls so they need to be careful Chelsea Doherty Queen with nowhere to go and a, a foul is called in the end, I think it went on Sumi Nidulon, and that's her third. So that's now the fourth player for Kalishta Ida, as she is punished this time by Queen. Two lovely looking shots from Queen, and we're five point lead. Uh, it's, in it's interesting, so every, every time Josh Eda get the ball. St. St. Joe's have five people behind her already, and every time St. Joe's get the ball, they always have two players ahead of of Josh Eda getting back on defense. So um, maybe not that time there after a wonderful three being hit, but more often than not, St. Joe's just have to work. Or sorry, Clash Eda just have to work too hard to, to score the ball at the moment. Yeah, fantastic three from Sumi Nidulon. She's shown good range and. Try to encourage your teammates after that, but again, that stop, start, start. That's five team fouls, and that's the fourth on the dueling, and they cannot afford to lose her at this rate. Yeah. 
second one goes in. Yeah, look, the, coach, the coaches at the moment anyway seem, seem not moving from the bench, so they, they must trust uh, Sumi to, to carry on and not pick up a fifth foul. And the travel of Nihei, she's just shuffled her feet before putting the ball on the floor. So the St. Joe's crowd, both in the arena and on Twitter, get behind their team. Don't forget if you're watching, at B-Ball IRL, hashtag Subway Schools, at B-Ball IRL. Send your pictures and messages. I'll try and read out what I can. Shot from Queen, doesn't go. Mihai can't grab hold of it. Falls into the hands of Duffy. But close attention paid in the end and who is that going to go on and that's gone on five and that's four fouls on Molly Nikalig yeah that, that has to be worrying for Klaus Sheeda now I mean bad enough almost losing one player but we're losing two influential players um, I would seriously be considering taking them out of the game right now a long way to go, Slim, this one. 6.35 to go in the third quarter. So a full 16, almost 17 minutes to play. I have to be extremely careful. So Sarah Nielinschig sets things up and she gets the ball back. Nice pass inside and good hands from Sarah Burke. Deflects the ball out of bounds. Cronin gets the ball to Nidulin, who's made a couple of those long-range shots, but not on this occasion. And another foul. This one's gone on number four, Sarah Nilinshig, as a timeout is called, possibly to discuss the foul trouble they're in. We'll take a break here, 6.15 to go, St. Joe's 20, Kolosh to Ida 17. So welcome back. There's St. Joe's leading by three. Alicia Duffy gets a roll there. Extends the lead to four. Open shot from the dueling. Doesn't go. And here comes Queen. Been good on the break so far. Finds a gap and somehow manages to save it into the hands of Hannah Burke. But she can't score and goes out of bounds. Eventually off the hands of Sarah Burke. And it will go back to Kalista Eder's ball. And Doulon finds a bit of space. Tough to penetrate the zone and good hands from Burke. Hands of Queen and you can see now that very care the Kalush to Ida defense has been very careful not to pick up fouls. Yeah, but the Rossos are so slow to get back in transition. I mean, it's the only way that St. Joe's have been scoring. So score they do, 23-17. And here we go in transition again, and New Dulor has to just stand there, and she's on four fouls. 
but they end up getting the rebound with Sarah Nilinchik. And here comes Nihei. But fumbles the ball and it's gone for a jump ball, but it will stay with Kalushta Ida's ball. Glad to see a good few people watching live. Plenty of messages coming in on Twitter. Mostly St. Joe's, a few from actually. We've changed the possession now. One Twitter name in particular, but I'm afraid I don't even know how to start to pronounce. It's in Irish and it's very long, I can tell you that. There's no point in showing it to me, man. I can't pronounce that either. Anyway, glad to see you joining us. You might want to spell it phonetically for us. That's the only chance I have, I'm afraid. I presume it's a Kerry native, so unfortunately down at the moment, but certainly not out as a good rebound from Nivroon. Starts the fast break and Nihei managed to get that and bit of contact but no foul call and good handle from point guard Doherty. Queen, top of the key, takes the shot, banks that in and now all of a sudden from being a tight game it's an eight point game and a little bit of a worry for Kalishta Edos, they haven't scored in some four minutes. Yeah, I'm so surprised by Kashi. It's Queen that's been doing lo a lot of the damage, and she really was wide open at the top of the key there. And a timeout call from St. Joe's this time, as they want to discuss their lead. So 4-4 four, four to go. It's 25-17, and we'll take a break. And welcome back here, four minutes to go in this third quarter. Under 19 seat, Subway All-Island Schools Cup Final. It's St. Joe's, Castle Ta uh, Charlestown leading Kalishta Ida and Dangan, 25-17. Good hands from the Kalig, can't make that shot. And good hands inside there from Greeny Nivoon. Can't quite get the steal. And here comes Queen with a head of steam. Just bounces out, but good defense. And a good rebound from Nilinshik to jump ball. And just a quick break for Nihei as she's back in. Sunny Doulon. Looking for a little bit of space. And Mikalik finds that space but unable to penetrate. And at the moment they're just struggling to get to the basket a little bit, but the shot goes up. From Nivoon and a foul is called. No, a travel is called. Yeah, just Kloshi they're just a bit slow to move the ball against his own. And the case of him holding on to the ball for a bit too long and not getting much movement against his own, not making them work hard enough. Doulon gets top of the key, nowhere to go. Nihei gets a bit of penetration, but straight into defenders. And at the moment, St. Joe's playing some excellent defense and 
Again, you talk about the transition, and here they go. Here comes Burke. A travel there. And Nihei, not seeing the ball come inbound, but luckily Nidulon was paying attention. Nidulon looks to penetrate the zone, does. Nikalik, nice move inside, looks to bank one in, doesn't get it. Good rebound inside from Nivun, and she'll end up taking one from the baseline, but doesn't go. And here go St. Joe's in the break with Burke. Little strong off the backboard. A good job of rebounding from Nivun, but bounced out of bounds off her hand, and it will be St. Joe's ball. Yeah, again, just, just getting her looks and getting out in transition. Three on two there. Um, maybe didn't capitalise on it the best way, but still got the ball back and making it count now. Kelly Queen, wide open baseline jump shot, and the shot's just coming a little bit easier for St. Joe's than they are for Kalishta Ida, and that's why they have a 10 point lead, two minutes to go in this third quarter. And a little bit of worry from Kalishta Ida at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. They're, I mean, they're downtown, they've got foul, foul trouble, and they're really just. Oh, and that's going to be it. A silly, silly foul. And that's five fouls, unfortunately, for the very impressive Sumi Li Doulon. And she obviously got it as she goes to the bench with a full quarter and two minutes to go. Yeah, it's tough, tough for her. Anna Burke. Trying to make things worse from the foul line for Kalishta Ida. But she doesn't, but a good rebound. And definitely you can't make it. And Nihei finds open Nikalik. Again, good defense, Nikalik. Jump shot off the basket for two. And that gives Kalishta Ida a little bit of confidence. It was much better ball movement there, quick, quick passing and uh, making the right decision to, to pass the ball, find the other man and a good shot. Uh, bang Tom, not sure she called it, but they all count. Good rebound and Nikalik again with another chance, but can't get that one out of bounds as Queen stands on the end line. 110 to go. 27-19. And Lynchig goes out of bounds. So Nikalik looks to try and get another score for Klishta Ida. And cut this deficit. Nice drive inside from Nivroon. And Nivroon gets back-to-back -back baskets for Klishta Ida. And we still have a game. Yeah, for I mean, for as poor as a quarter it's been for Klishta Ida, they're, they're still only six points down. They've battled hard and... Uh, I think they'll be happy, happy enough now, given how the game has gone. To if they can get to the end of the third, maintaining a six-point deficit, we give them every chance in the fourth quarter. Sideline ball, 33 seconds to go in this third. Nikalik has the ball in their hands. A little bit of pressure from Burke inside the hay, trying to find a little bit of space. There isn't any at the moment from this swarm of defense. When Hay gets it up and again <laughs> off the backboard. Yeah, that's uh, like you said, it's about confidence, momentum, and once one starts going in, and you have the confidence to take the next one and take good shots, you have every chance of keep, keeping it going. Keeping good it defense up. there from Kalish to Ida. 1.7 seconds to go, four point game. They'll have a chance, and the Hay will throw it up from half court. That's not far off. Just short, so end of the third quarter in the under 19 C Subway All Island Schools Cup final. It's St. Joe's 27, Clish to Eda 23.
So here we go, the court will decide this under 19 C. Girls All Ireland Schools Cup final. Queen, first shot of the quarter. Remember, they led for 10 with just a minute to go in that third. Now it's a four point lead for St. Joe's. But serious foul trouble from Kolosh to Ida. And Connor, how much is the foul trouble? As we see the first basket of this final quarter go for Duffy. How much is foul trouble going to play into the result of this game? Yeah, it's going to be big. I mean, they've, they've already lost a, a very influential player in Tumini Doulon. Uh, and, and it's not just about the, the individual foul trouble, but for, from very early on in that last quarter, Klaus Jeter were, were in, a, in foul trouble in terms of having five fouls, and that means two shots every possession. So uh, if, they, if they can keep the foul count low, uh, continue what they've been doing in the last two or three minutes, they'll be with a chance. Uh, but if they lose another one or two players, you're going to have to think that it's going to swing in favour of St. Joe's. A fantastic block on the break there from Nihei. He seems to have done himself a little bit of damage. But she'll struggle through. And just saved this time by Nivun. And she'll have a chance from the baseline to make a jump. It doesn't go. And a good rebound for St. Joe's. Queen just slows things down. College to Ida, sit right back in the zone here. Not going to give anything away inside. Drive down the middle of the lane. It's unsuccessful for Hannah Burke. But inside is Sarah Burke, and she makes no mistake as below us. I think that's Hannah Burke that's done a little bit of damage to her leg. Hopefully she'll be okay, but 31, 23 at the moment, St. Joe's lead. And unfortunately that looks like the last we'll see of Hannah Burke for the time being. She looks to be in a little bit of pain, but hopefully she'll be okay and I'm sure Fizio will have a quick look at her below. So, Kalista Ida through Nikalik finds an open. Oh, Nilin, she was open for a split second but didn't get it off. And Nikalik does get it off, but good rebound. Inside for Duffy, who starts the fast break to Doherty. Doherty decides against going all the way, but Crane will go all the way to the basket. Doesn't get a good rebound inside, but missed shot. Back out to Burke, and Duffy with a shot. Doesn't go, and off the fast break goes Nivroon. And she has help in the guise of Necronine, but can't find Nihei in the corner with a pass, and it will be St. Joe's ball. Yeah, St. Joe's been very impressive getting back in transition they're really good at either stopping the fast break early or at least getting back and clogging the keys so that nothing easy is uh, even being attempted again Queen with no choice but to hold the ball on the outside as Kulashi either sit back but eventually Queen does get inside but good block this time and it'll be Neil Linshig that's Trying to find a bit of space. Nihei takes a very deep three. Comes up short and into the hands of Crane, who will look to attack. But again, slows it down. Time is on this side. 6.51 to go in this fourth quarter. Crane precise with a pass. But Duffy comes up short with a jumper. Good ball move from Klosh to Ida, but they need to start getting baskets. And again, good block from Elisa Duffy. And a foul goes against Sereni Linschig. That'll be her third. Oh. 
Long range two. Come O'Donnell doesn't go. And Kulishta Ida had a little spurt at the end of that third quarter, but they've gone dry again. And Connor in desperate need of a basket here just to get the spirits lifted a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You can see you can see by them by their movements that they're just a little bit tired at the moment. Uh, St. Joe's seem to have a bit more energy and one or two more baskets on answer from St. Joe's you think might seal this game. And foul on Nihei, that'll be her fourth. And it'll be the impressive Keeley Crean that will go to the line with two shots. Don't forget, still to come today, the under-19B boys final. St. Mary's Dyson versus Kalishta and Piersi Glanmire. Nice shot from Crean. Thirty-two, twenty-three, and here comes Doherty. And Nahi had no choice but to let it go to the basket as she's on four fouls, and all of a sudden, up the biggest lead of the game with an eleven-point lead for St. Joe's. Yeah, super tight. It's, it's, it's again, it's, it's amazing that they've consistently been allowed uh, fast break and get all their points in transition, and uh, because of the foul trouble, they're not able. Not Willie really, Shea, especially, is not able to stop them this time, but. 11 points now. It's going to be a long way back. Good footwork from Queen, but doesn't get it enough. That is going to be the fifth foul on the hay. She holds her head in her hands, knowing what's coming. So that's two of their best players now sitting on the bench with five fouls as a timeout is called by St. Joe's. So welcome back, St. Joe's, Charlestown leading this one 34-23 and that ball comes back to Queen, can't get it this time and rebounded by Nee Lynchig. And Connor does the, the fouling out of Kiwa Nihei spell the last chance for College to eat it, or are they still in with a, with a sniff here? Well, they'll, they'll still be in a sniff as long as there's enough time left, and there is at the moment, but uh, I think that the chances are, are pretty slim and will come back at this point, having lost their two most influential players so far in this game. Here goes O'Donnell. But good defence this time. Might have got away with a bit of a travel, but ends up in the hands of Neil Lynchig. And a tweet in from, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the mother of Kiwa Nihei, Helen Nihei, might be sister, and I would read the tweet out, but unfortunately it's in the Irish. And uh, being a Welsh native, Connor might have a, have a crack at it. I'm having a look. I, I have absolutely no. I can only assume he's, she's talking about the referee foul count, 22 to 4. Uh, 
And inside, doesn't get the ball this time, Burke. But good rebound again from Burke, and she'll have another go. <laughs> another foul is called. Of course, Connor referring to the 25 fouls being called on Kloster, Eder and Dangan, as opposed to the four on St. Joe's. But in some games like this, I think the size of, of St. Joe's has certainly played a part, especially on defense, a very tall team. Yeah, we can't, can't take anything away from the defense of St. Joe's. Uh, and they, they've done an incredi incredible job in disrupting the offense of Klaus Schieder and, and in, in turn getting steals or stops and converting them into fast break layups on the far end. Yeah, this, this happens in big finals. But all to play for though, 12 points is not a huge deficit, but they'll need to start scoring soon as that one goes astray from Kathleen Golio Rohn. Another tough name for me to deal with, checked into the game. Just so I was getting used to some of the other ones. And now Castle, uh, St. Joe, sorry, just taking their time a little bit on offense. Shot goes up from the Cronin, but can't make it. And as we go under three minutes, College to Eda will need to start making baskets. Could this be the start of the comeback as Georgia Ne Crony makes her first basket of the day? Yeah, some excellent rebounding by, by all the players across Eda there, giving them three or four opportunities to score and and eventually uh, Ne Crony puts the ball in the basket for them. Ten point game. And Queen misses that jumper. And chance for back-to-back -back baskets for Kalishta Ida. The ball's in the hands of Mikalik. They need to go fast here now. A couple of quick baskets and a foul call. And Seb and Hannah Burke has made a miraculous recovery and she will check back into the game for Elaine O'Donnell. Long two. It doesn't go for Nivoon. And Kelly Queen. Inside the book. Great block this time, Nivoon, but back into the hands of Burke. Can't finish. And another block from Nivoon, who has to be careful. She's another one on four fouls. But I suppose at this point. Not much real point in Moima. So with time out to go, 146 left in the game. It's 35-25. So welcome back, 146 to go. St. Joe's Charlestown leading Kloster Eder and Dangan, 35-25. Some quick scores acquired from Kloster Eder. But still the swarming defense from St. Joe's makes it impossible, it ends up in a turnover. Hannah Burke gets it to Queen. We've heard back from Helen Nishi, no relation to Kiwa. Thank you for 
do us a favor and write it in English. I apologize for my lack of Irish. See, St. Joe's just being a bit smarter with the ball now. They've had a chance of fast break and declined just to take more time off the clock. Queen inside, doesn't get the score, but gets the rebound and will have another chance to take another 14 seconds off the clock and finds an open Burke under the basket. A good movement, this side inside to Hannah Burke. And foul goes on. Is it okay to assume those Burks are sisters? I'm presuming so, they look very similar. But I've already made one assumption that turned out to be wrong. And unfortunately, that's the end of Brianna Nivroom, who's had an excellent game for Kolesh to Ida, but the third player to be fouled out. Missed shot, but back into the hands of Burke. As we click under 50 seconds. Connor, what, what's the difference in this game? What's, uh, what led St. Joe's to what looks like to be a certain victory at this point? There's two things, really. It's, uh, and they both lead into another. One is, is stopping Cross Cheetah from getting easy shots. Cross Cheetah, all game, had to work hard. St. Joe's have been very quick back in transition and, and stopped all the easy scores. And, uh, and then on the other end, they're just getting out in the break and beat, beating Clashida down the floor to score easy points. I mean, they haven't scored too many points when, when Clashida have set up their defence, but uh, they're just a bit quicker out in the open floor and made some better decisions, decisions with some strong moves to the basket. And Kelly Queen grabs that rebound, so it might be a good time for me to ask you, who is your MVP for this one? Yeah, perfect timing. It has to be number 15, Kelly Queen. She's, she's really dominated the game and... Uh, put her mark in it and really been the, ma the main difference. Uh, Sarah Lee, no, sorry, not Sarah Lee, uh, Chelsea already also had a great game, but um, I think Kelly Crean has to be today's MVP. Yeah, it's an excellent game, both ends of the floor. So with 30 seconds to go in this game. Just a little discussion below us with the referees. I think it's on a Kit number, number 11, probably isn't on the score sheet because she's not on my sheet either. Number 11 is blank, so I can't identify her at the moment, I'm afraid. Checking in the game for the first time is Anna Sloyan. We'll check in for Hannah Burke. Queen bounces that one out. Gets the roll on the second. So 30 seconds to go. And Nikalik. Gets a shot up, doesn't go. Follow up by Goyle O'Roin. Doesn't make it. And Anna Sloyan will have a chance. But a good steal this time from Lee Cornin. And she'll look to go all the way to the basket as the clock ticks to just under four seconds. And it'll be their ball. And we've subs coming in. And Anna Nikahesig will check in for the first time as well to get. A little bit of action here for Klosh to eat up. And inside goes the ball, but not in time. And rather apt at the end of the game there, ends up in the hands of Kelly Queen. And so at the end of the under 19 C schools cup final, it's St. Joe's Charlestown have beaten Klosh to eat 36 to 25 in a well deserved victory as they hug and embrace on the floor with a deflated but not distraught College to Eda. They've had an excellent game as well. So well done to the winner, St. Joe's Car uh, Charlestown. Stay with us for the presentation of the trophy and the MVP. And then we'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes time with the 
under 19 B boys final promises to be a cracker. St. Mary's from Drogheda against Cluster and Pershing from Glanmire. 